Hi everyone, this is Tracy with Trixie Scraps Designs, and today I have a video tutorial for you teaching you how to complete a quick page in Creative Memories Storybook Creator software. If you've never done this before, you'll see that it's actually pretty easy to accomplish. So first, I'm going to switch over to the software, if I can find that on my computer. Okay, um, I'm going to be working in Storybook Creator 4.0. But if you have an earlier version of the software, the instructions are going to be fairly similar um, and you shouldn't have any problem translating them to an earlier version because this is, like I said, pretty basic. So the first thing you want to do is open it, uh, create, I'm sorry, create a new project or page, which is this option right here, or you can go up here, but I usually use this. So once you click on that, you want to go to create a new page or image, which is what I do. Now, I usually print either at home or I put them on a CD or a disc or whatever and take them to a local photo processing lab. So I usually select local printer and then I work on 12 by 12 pages. Obviously, you would want to use the option um, on the left hand side here that best fits your personal situation. Um, but like I said, for me, local printer and 12 by 12 page is what I need to do. So then I hit create. And you'll see that that opens up a brand new blank 12 by 12 canvas for me to work on. I find the easiest way to bring a quick page into the software is to simply open the folder that contains the quick pages and drag and drop them onto my work surface. Now you'll say, what is a quick page exactly? If you're not sure what they are, I'll give you a look at them now. Uh, this is my set of quick pages from my Heart of a Friend collection. And basically what they are is a 12 by 12 or whatever size page that is already designed for you and flattened. But before they're flattened, you'll see that the photo spaces in the template have been cut out and left transparent for you so that you can pop your photos right in there and basically have a completed page in minutes um, if that's you know where you want to stop. So I'll just give you an idea of some of the quick pages that are in this particular set. And this is the one we'll be working with today. So as I said, what I do is I grab the quick page I want to use, click on it, hold your mouse key down, and drag it into the software. You'll see a little plus sign show up. I'll do that for you again so you can see it. When you see that little plus sign show up next to your cursor, that means you can let the mouse button go and the quick page will drop in. Now notice it's not exactly in the right spot. There's an easy fix to that. Up here along the top, you can go to the Align menu, drop all the way down to Center on Page, and when you do that, it'll put the quick page exactly in the right spot for you. It'll line it up on all the edges, and when you send this page to the printer, you won't get any weird edges where something's cut off or there's you know a white edge on one side. It'll, it'll be perfectly lined up on the 12 by 12 canvas for you when you use that command. So now that we have our quick page here, we need to add some photos. The easiest and quickest way to do this to make sure that your photos fit into these spaces is to use the photo box or empty frame command in the Creative Memories um, software. So what you do is go to the insert menu and I want to insert, instead of a photo, I want to insert an empty frame what you'll see is that that creates a gray box with the instruction to drop image here smack in the center of your layout on the top of everything. Don't worry about that, we're going to show you how to fix that in just a minute. But first what I want to do is get this box sort of somewhat into the shape of the three photo openings here on this page. So what I'll do is kind of drag it around and line it up over here and I'm going to use the arrow keys, click and drag to resize this box about the size that I need it to be. And then you'll see this green circle here at the top. When I hover over that, my arrows change and they look like they're going around in a circle. That basically tells you that that's how you rotate this piece. So you want to click, hold down on that green button and you can turn that box ever so slightly so it fits into that photo hole. So now that we've got that at the right angle, it looks almost right, but maybe not. 
you'll notice that it's cutting off all these buttons and flowers and everything that's on top of this um, quick page and that's not what we want. So the way to fix that is to come over here in the elements column. This is all the things that you've added to your page and you'll see that this gray box is on top of the quick page. The way that creative memory software organizes itself is literally the things at the top of this elements column are the things that are on the topmost portion of your page and everything underneath it is un literally underneath that top element. So what we need to do is actually reverse the order of these two items so that the photo box is underneath the quick page. And the easiest way to do that is just to click, hold your mouse button down, and drag it until you see that black line show up underneath your quick page. And when you see that black line, let go, and the photo box will be underneath the quick page and now you don't see any of your elements being cut off and everything looks the way that it should once the photos are in there. You'll notice that this frame has three photo spots and they're all the exact same size so I need three photo boxes the exact same size and the best way to duplicate this is to copy it. So if you right click with your mouse you can get the copy command that comes up and then you can click anywhere else and right click again and choose paste and it puts another box in there for you. Again it's going to put it on top of the quick page no big deal. We're just going to go ahead and do what we did before and drag it underneath and then we can paste again and take that third box move it where it belongs and one more time drag it underneath the quick page and now we're ready to add our photos. So let me go to my folder that I have here with my photos. Again, the easiest way to do this is just to drag and drop them onto your workspace. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight this third photo or the first one that I set up over here. And I'm going to grab this photo of my niece. I'm going to drag it in and I'm going to hover over that photo box. When you see it turn yellow, it may turn a different color in on your computer, but on my computer it turns yellow. When you see it turn yellow, that means it's active and it's ready to accept the photo that you're dragging in. So you can drop the photo at that point and it puts it right into the box in the exact spot that it should be and it's all ready for you to resize it. Now, you don't want to resize the photo with the white handles on the corners because that's actually going to resize that gray box and not the photo itself. If you want to resize the photo itself, you need to use this little blue handle over here that shows up after you add a photo to the photo box. So in my case I think I want to make it a little bit bigger but now I don't like the way that these flowers are cutting off her face and her chin. There's an easy fix to that as well. I can actually reposition the photo within that gray box. You're going to use this little yellow handle in the center of the photo. I'm going to click on that, hold it down, and drag it up, drag it around pretty much any direction you need to and there you go. You have it positioned exactly how you like. So moving on, we'll add the other photos quickly to the page. Once again, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger and I'm going to reposition just a little bit. And finally the third picture is of my nephew. bigger as well. Reposition that down a little bit. And actually I made Charlotte's picture a little bit too big so let's decrease that just a tad. And there you go. All three pictures are placed. And now the only thing that I have left to do with this page if I want to is add some journaling. I can add a title. I can do that with some alphas that I have in my stash. I can do it with a font. Whatever you would like. But the page is basically done. Um, and it would just take a few minutes more to add a title and some journaling if I'd like. So to save this page, I would just go to File, Save As, Save As once again. And you always want to save these pages as JPEGs because that's the printable version of the page. I'm going to save mine to my desktop and I'm going to call it Nieces and Nephew. Tell it to save. I want to save the full page. 300 dpi is the best quality. That's what I want for a printed page. 
I want to save it at high quality and click OK. And you'll see that the software flattens the whole page into one single image. And this is ready to print. I could send it to my home printer or I could save it to a CD or to a memory stick and take it to my local photo printer and have it printed that way as well. I could also upload it online. Whatever option you choose, the page is pretty much done. And that is how you use a quick page in Storybook Creator. If you have any questions or comments, or if you need further help, please feel free to leave a comment on this post, and somebody from our staff will get back to you and try to help you out as soon as possible. And thanks so much for watching. Have a great day.